Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. It's the one everyone waits for, friends. It is the dunce cap of the month award. And of course, what's even better, of course, than the dunce caps you get? Uh, the winner, I should say, is all of the stupid people. That almost won. And we cover them at length. Uh, we've made a lot of them today. You guys will be amazed at the stupidity. And it's all around you. Why do I do these? I do these so that you can call the people responsible for this stupidity. And point it out to your friends and neighbors that we live in a world that is awash with mind-blowing levels of stupidity. And if you doubt me, then uh, let's move into the first story that I have here, and it should uh, quell all doubt. J.P. Morgan, the big bankers, you know how they get away with everything. J.P. Morgan, to pay another slap on the wrist, fine for engaging in systemic customer credit card debt fraud. Um, what does that mean? It means that they did things that if you had done it, you would be in prison for. That's what it means. Um... Michael Krager is from Liberty, Liberty Blitz, Blitzkrieg. Just yesterday, I published a post titled Florida Man Sentenced to 2.5 Years in Jail for Having Sex on the Beach. We covered that. The purpose of that wasn't to justify his actions, but rather to highlight the difference between how average citizens are treated under the U.S. justice system and how thieving, remorseless financial oligarchs are treated. While Mr. Cavallaro may have ruined a day for a few beachgoers by crudely having sex on a public beach in broad daylight, he didn't run the U.S. economy into the ground and cause the destitution of tens of millions of Americans. Nor did he receive trillions in taxpayer backstops and bailouts only to turn around and pay himself a record bonus and then carry on the extremely profitable illegal schemes. So what did they do? Listen to this. J.P. Morgan Chase and Company has agreed to pay at least $125 million to settle probes by the U.S. state and federal authorities that the bank sought to properly collect and sell a consumer credit card debt, according to people familiar with the matter. The settlement also includes about $50 million in restitution. $50 million. Do you realize the amount of money... They take 125 and only have to pay 50 million back. This is the height of why the economy and the world we live in is doing so bad. It's why there's less money in your pocket, no matter how much you work. You want to know why? This is why. What can you do about it? You can get your money out of J uh, J.P. Morgan Bank, for one thing. Um, go look up How to Live Without Banks. I do it every day. I guarantee that it works. It's on my site, How to Live Without Banks. <coughs> You want dumber? We have dumber. New Jersey legislators want to ban drone photography of, quote, critical infrastructure. Now, the reason that this caught my eye to put it on the Dunce Cap of the Month show was because of the glaring omission that it's public record and you're allowed to take photography with zoom lenses that do exactly what the drone does. Government paranoia about critical infrastructure will now be extended to drone photography if New Jersey's proposed legislation is any indication. While law enforcement agencies are still weighing the Fourth Amendment implications of surveillance drones, some local governments are moving ahead with plans to shortchange the First Amendment. In this new legislation, it says, makes it a criminal offense to use a drone to take a photograph of critical infrastructure. And just what is that? It's any asset whose incapacity, even partial incapacity, would have an impact on the physical or economic security or public health and safety of the state. Want to know what's weird about it? The photography of public structures is illegal and probably has something to do with terrorism. Even if the structure is already completely viewable from the naked eye, it can be viewed via satellite photography, that'd be Google Earth, and has been subject to multiple official photo releases, people with cameras around certain structures are considered inherently suspicious. This is the ultimate height of stupidity because 
If somebody flies a drone by critical infrastructure, it's going to be picked up on many, one of the many cameras that are around such infrastructures, and it would probably be a heads up that they're being spied on. Now people are just going to go back to doing it the legal way with cameras. Stupid, dumb, one dumber, we got even dumber. Freebeacon.com, Fed spend $222,172 studying how men look at women when they drink. The ultimate stupid, now people always say all the time, why do you do Fukushima updates? You're not a physicist. Even though, you know, I know how to read. I, I know what cancer is. I know how to, to warn others about what I've read that they might not have seen. I'll tell you one thing I do. I'm a DJ, and I've been in clubs and DJing and going as fans and going as patrons forever. I know a lot about people that drink. It happens almost every day of my life that I'm where work. People drinking. Men do not look at women any differently when they drink than when they're sober. Now, they may have that, uh, that wall that separates uh, what you should say with what you want to say or what you're thinking, I should say. It, it takes that wall down. But men don't look at women any differently than when they drink. Women don't look at men any differently when they drink. It is the stupidest waste of tax money your money did you go to work today great so did i and guess what our, our money went to this the national institute of health is spending over two hundred thousand dollars to study how men drinking alcohol look at women they're drunk they look at it every drunk person pretty much let's face it you have your your weepy drunks your angry drunks your silly drunks and then the ones that depend on the mood around them and then, of course, you know, the, the people that want to hug and kiss all over you, which is both sexes equally, thank you very much. You don't need to spend another $200,000 to find out it's true for women, too. In an effort to limit male-initiated sexual aggression toward female acquaintances, like, you know, the, the girl wasn't drinking either, of course, she was a saint, researchers at the University of Iowa will analyze the actual eye movements of young men when they are drunk and when they are sober. And while their eye movements are monitored... This is your tax dollars, people. Participants will view 200 unique scenes that depict women who varies along sexual interest, provocativeness of dress, or attractiveness. In other words, trying to say that men have their guard down and therefore they're probably more likely to rape women when they're drunk. That's not true at all. The point is what usually happens is both parties were drinking. They end up messing around and somebody in some instances feel like they need to throw blame somewhere so it's the man's fault, especially if he's white. Um, it's definitely the man's fault uh, if, he's, uh, if he's had anything to drink whatsoever, even if she can't stand up. Uh, and, you know, they're both ripped out of their minds. It's the guy's fault. And you see it all the time. And she was, and I'm not saying you should be able to get a girl drunk and have sex with her. That's wrong. What I'm saying is usually they're both ripped. And then the guy ends up getting in trouble for something that they both did. You don't need $200,000 to find out that that is a correct view. A Kit Daniels Prison Planet Global Warming Expedition Foiled by Record Ice. This is the second year in a row that this has happened. Do you realize that the planet has not warmed in 18 years? You do realize that, right? 18 years. Man-made global warming isn't happening. It is a lie. It is not being caused by man at all. It's just what the planet does, regardless of the fossil fuels, regardless of any of that. Now, if you want to argue, I've said before that we're getting cancer because of what we uh, put into the air, then I would, I, I'll listen to you all day, because we are. We're not warming the planet. Well, for the second year in a row, I wonder if they'll have to be dug out by two rescue boats this time. The icebreaker ship used for the 115-day expedition had to be rerouted Tuesday to break ice for commercial ships in the Hudson Bay because the ice conditions are the worst that they've been in 20 years, according to the Canadian Coast Guard. For those of you that say that I don't give sources. Obviously, it has a large impact on us, said Martin Fortier, the executive director of the Global Warming Research Institute Arctic Net which has been spearheading the expedition and which is wasting a lot of money again. That's why it's the Dunce Cap of the Month show. 
Now, the ice is so thick that ships are having to skirt around it. The same ice has been blamed for bringing two polar bears into the community last week, which is a highly unusual event. In other words, the polar bears are not on tiny shrinking blocks of ice. They are actually walking on the ice that has, uh, for all intents and purposes, not been there in thousands of years. There's more ice than ever, and the polar bears are walking into residential areas because the planet is, is obviously cooled there, and there's more ice connecting uh, the waterways. And they're icing over. It says, um, the volume of Arctic ice has increased by 33% since 2013, but we're warming the planet, Sam. The volume of Arctic ice has increased by 33% since 2013. That's uh, gone up for you Tennessee fans. Although scientists who are funded to promote the government-driven global warming agenda are claiming that the record ice is a freak occurrence. That claim, however, runs contrary to satellite data that shows that there has been no global warming for over 18 years. That's 222 months. That is since December of 1996. There has been no global warming at all. Um, again, researcher Lord Christopher Monckton and uh, remote sensing system temperature still unaffected by the strengthening El Nino. For all of you that are believing in the global warming lie, there's more proof that you have been misled. And guys, you know how it goes. The last few stories are levels of stupidity that you didn't think existed. You know what? I do this all the time. All the time. I didn't think this kind of stupidity existed. I'm going to get right into it. I want to shout out real quick to the people that keep me doing this, that keep the printers working. And since mine died, I have to get a new one. StickerJunkie.com. These are my band's stickers. You can get them. the correct views at Hotmail.com, dollar a piece. Those Passing Time stickers were made by Sticker Junkie. And you can go to StickerJunkie.com. Let them know that you heard about it from the correct views. And you're going to get a discount on them. And you're going to get stickers that look amazing. And then, while you're online, go look up Mike McLaughlin. M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. He is a writer of political rants. If you like this show, you'll, you'll really like his writing. Um, he writes fiction. He writes a lot of horror, vampire stuff. He writes poetry. So, I mean, if you if you want to know a writer, when is the last time you found a good writer? Well, you've got one, Mike McLaughlin. And that brings us to ISIS. Oh, if I could just send dunce caps overseas. If I could afford to send dunce caps overseas, I swear. This would get one. This might be the dumbest story, not just of that you're here today, but maybe ever. BizPack review, Carmine Sabia. Exploding chickens. Clock, the new weapon of choice for ISIS. Um, the reason this is so funny is they had the dumdy of the day uh, a while back. You can search it on my site, Correct Views Scorpion Bombs, and it's just as stupid as you think it is. The much-feared scorpion bomb, they would, they would lob a... Uh, 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 improvised exploding devices and then the scorpions would rain down on you. And I guess it's terrifying if you don't own a boot. I don't know. The newest reported weapon of the Islamic State is appropriate for the group of cowards. Beautiful sentence. The terrorist set is reportedly now using chickens blah, equipped with suicide vests to infiltrate enemy camps and then be detonated to killing anyone near the blast. I love when uh, when anything bad happens to ISIS. Who's with me on this? Pictures begin circulating on social media showing the suicide chickens. For suicide, I think. I don't think they signed up. Not even with the uh, social media applies. I don't think so. So the chickens uh, were pro and anti-ISIS people. However, the authenticity of the pictures has yet to be verified. It was on the Daily Mail. The crude devices show how ISIS is running low on ammunition following several years of all-out war in Syria and Iraq, the newspaper quoted unnamed experts saying. Yeah, because everything they do is illegal. It's stolen oil. It's, uh, it's uh, stealing, th stealing money at gunpoint. They can't produce anything. All they can do is steal what other people have produced and kill people. That's all they can do. I mean, how, how long are they going to live? So what are they doing? And then now it's exploding chickens getting themselves on the Dutch Cap of the Month Award show. But no, they're not the dumbest. Who could possibly who could possibly hold their own with the stupidity of ISIS? Well, how about Jeb Bush? 
Uh, now, this is at abcnews.com. If I were you, I would not go to the, the site because it has ads that play and refresh and slow your entire system down to a crawl. Uh, Pop-ups nonstop. Whatever you do, do not really go to the site. Jeb Bush. People should work longer hours. People need to work longer hours. Never mind that it was his family that arranged for outsourcing to happen, which meant that all of the jobs that historically have offered overtime or extra hours don't. Why? Because the Bush family, and they're not the only ones, but they were a massive part of it. Things like NAFTA. Send your jobs to Mexico. Send your jobs anywhere. Send them anywhere you want. And then wonder why the American people aren't working more. Well, you can't get more than 39 hours anywhere because they don't want you to get Obamacare or 35, whatever it is. So that, that rules it out right there. And then, of course, you can try to have two jobs. But you know what? A lot of times places aren't hiring because they don't need people because all the good jobs have been sourced away. So this idiot, I swear to God, if he gets anywhere near the White House and is in charge of anything more than janitorial duties, I swear this country is freaking doomed. Listen to this idiot. Republican presidential idiot Jeb Bush said Wednesday that in order to grow the economy, people need to work longer hours. A comment that the Bush campaign argues was a reference to the underemployed part-time workers, but which Democrats are already using to attack him. Well, Clinton did the same thing, so they can get off their high horse as well. But think about this for a minute. The underemployed part-time workers, do you know why they're underemployed part-time workers? Because they can't find another job. They can't. They, there are no full-time jobs. They've all been sent away by members of the Bush family. People are working at KFC with degrees. Why? Because that's all they can get, because of the Bush family. And the solution is to work longer hours, which, you know, um, I guess is you're just gonna pull you're gonna pull your boss aside and say, yeah. Yeah. I know you're not allowed to put me over 39 hours. I, I understand that, but you have to understand this. I need you to do it anyway. Yep, that's right. I need you to give me extra hours because Jeb Bush said it's gonna help the economy. Let me know, let me know what your boss says about that. Since doing an interview that was live streamed on the app Periscope, Bush made the comments to New Hampshire's The Union leader answering a question about his plans for tax reform. Uh, Rand Paul has the best idea for tax reform. Gary Johnson is just about as good, and Trump is a close third. Jeb Bush? Come on, people. What has any Bush really ever done for you? Granted, George Bush, at least, the last George Bush, at least made sure that you got some kind of a tax cut. And it said it was only for the rich. Well, we know that wasn't true. I'm not rich. I got one. Um, you know, that, that that's helpful. But come on. That's nothing compared to what Trump and Rand are saying, where you can, you can get them paid for on the back of a, a card for crying out loud. So, I mean, get off it, Bush. It says his aspiration for the country and he says, I believe we can achieve it, is 4% growth, as far as the eye can see, which means we have to be a lot more productive, which, of course, we send all of our productive jobs to China. Work for, workforce participation has to rise from the all-time moderate lows, which, of course, has been caused by the actions of his family. It means that people need to work longer hours. Of course, it's not offered to them for the reasons that I just gave you and others, I'm sure. And, though, and through their productivity, gain more income for their families. Of course, no place is going to give you those hours. And that's the only way we're going to get out of the rut that we are in. Well, if that's your only plan, and we've already established just now why that wouldn't work, then that's all you need to know about why not to vote for Jeb Bush. Three to four stories left, including two of the dumbest sex stories that you have ever heard. Daily Sheeple, Joshua Krauss. Oh, yeah. 
Well, no, you know what? I'm not going to get to that one. I'm going to get to this first. I'm going to get to this first. Daily Sheeple, Joshua Krause. Driver pulled over for hanging air freshener in his car. I'm doing it this way because the sex one is even dumber, so it needs to go ahead. It all started when Michigan resident Richard Houghton was driving through Wisconsin, where he was pulled over by a police officer. The reason? He apparently had an air freshener hanging from his rearview mirror and the GPS unit on his dash, which, according to the police officer, were obstructing his view of the road and thus illegal under state law. Now, first of all, if the driver says it's not obstructing his view, wouldn't the driver know whether or not it's obstructing his view instead of somebody in another car? It says a subsequent search of the vehicle yielded a small amount of marijuana, which is, again, abusing probable cause to pull someone over. He was arrested and jailed with two years of probation, and his car was seized under civil forfeiture laws. So what do you do? You call. You call this department. How? I mean, not how. Excuse me. The, um, the Michigan Police Department. You call the Wisconsin Police Department. First of all, you call Michigan and say, do you realize what's happening to our citizens? Second of all, you call Wisconsin and say, what the hell are you doing to our citizens? How about that? Says Halton tried to argue in court that the stop was illegal and that the marijuana evidence should be thrown out. The court agreed that the police can't pull you over for having an air freshener, but said he could be pulled over for having not having a real having only a rear license plate, which is legal in Michigan but not in Wisconsin. See how they hose you, see how they get their hands in to steal from you. Am I saying that the cops stole it? Yes, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. They stole it. His conviction was later overturned during the appeal, but he won't be getting his car back, nor will he be reimbursed in any way. So there you go. The, the right to free movement in this country is on the backslide, and, and that needed to be mentioned. That, that needs to be shouted from the rooftops. And I know you guys all want the sex. You were promised sex. Where's my sex? CBSSocial.com. Here comes a police Stratford man performed sex act with a shrubbery. A shrubbery? Anybody know Monty Python? Anybody know? If you do, leave a message in my comment line. An 81-year-old Stratford man has been charged with public indecency, accused of performing a sex act with some shrubbery. I guess he liked Bush. He should have went with 70s porn. I know, it was crude. Police tell the Connecticut Post that they arrested Wallace Berg Monday after a neighbor showed them the video... He and a naked burb in the burg in the bushes outside Berg's home. Police say the neighbor told them that he confronted Berg, who then stopped the indecent behavior, covered himself with a grill cover, apologized, and went into his house. They could have left him alone. I mean, it's just a shrubbery. Police say the neighbor told them that he confronted Berg when he stopped and went into the house. Well, you know what? I, I, I would have left him alone just not to have the cops at my house. He was charged with public indecency and second-degree breach of peace. He was released after posting a $10,000 bond. How do you have $10,000 in bond if you're out screwing shrubbery? Or maybe maybe the key is to, you mean, I don't know, maybe if you start doing, maybe the shrubbery had money. That's what it was. It was like a money tree. And, you know, he, he, he knew what he was doing. Maybe he's not a dummy. No, he is. And that's why he's on the Dulls Cap of the Month show. Two stories left. The runner-up for the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Florida man arrested for having sex with an alligator. At least it wasn't an exploding alligator, Isis. Uh, people have had sex with pit bulls, donkeys, and even parrots. But this incident is on another level. This is from ThugRivals.com. Rupert Darwin, 59 kept a 12-foot alligator tied and blindfolded for the last month, sexually assaulting the reptile multiple times a day. He hog-tied an alligator, left it that way for a month, and proceeded to have sex with it. Now, that's the... I told you we were going to get dumber as we went. Darwin, the Darwin Awards, you know what that, that is, that, that's uh, people that say the survival of the fittest uh, was what Darwin believed, and if you do something really stupid and die that way, then you're considered to have won the Darwin Award, <laughs> what a perfect name. Darwin is a relatively unknown fisherman, I bet you not to the alligators, 
who lives in the outskirts of the remote town of 400. Residents say he sticks to himself and described him as odd. Why? Well, he seems to stick to something else. Police responded after a man out for a nature hike happened to walk by Darwin's house and saw Darwin having sex with the alligator in his backyard. <laughs> Uh, the witnesses say, uh, Darwin, the next time you try to kill a man, you best get the job done. Now you're my bitch forever. That's what Darwin said to the alligator as he was having sex with it. So he, he was making it his own, man. It was the damn strangest thing I've ever seen, the witness told police. The gator didn't even move. It was like it didn't give a crap that the man was having sex with it. Goes on that Collier County Sheriff's responded and arrested Darwin on multiple counts of animal cruelty and one count of illegally keeping a wild animal. It reminds me of that awful, uh, it's, it's good, it's, it's just awful, uh, the vice thing about the idiots that have sex with donkeys and talk about how it, tra it trains them. This is, this is an excerpt from Darwin's statement. The gator tried to eat me, and this was my revenge, pure and simple. I don't have no sexual attraction to gators, but I wanted to teach this bitch a lesson. I could have killed her, but that would have been too easy. She was getting what she deserved. Darwin also told police that he planned to chop the alligator's tail off and pull her teeth out as part of his revenge scheme, and even considered performing noise torture, torture for the reptile by playing what he described as N-word music. So he's a real classy act. Darwin claimed the alligator had gotten a hold of his pant leg, and in the fishing in swamp and tried to drag him into the water. So, of course, you know what that means. It means you have to tie the alligator into the backyard and have sex with it. And then again, I mean, let's face it, I would rather have sex with the alligator than listen to Kesha or Rihanna myself. So, I mean, there you go. But, uh, again, music is awful. Race is not awful. This guy is an idiot. So, uh, I, I hope he's in prison for a long time. That brings us to the dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dee Dumdy of the day. What is it? The Dumdy of the day today is the Dutch Cap of the Month Award, of course. Oh, yes. And the dumb, the level of dumb that we are about to go to may take us to new heights of all dumb dumb friends. Here we go. Dumdy dum. Florida man ordered to buy city to keep the barbecue smell from leaving his property. Dummy of a son, you'll see who the son is here. A little bit of a little bit of dumdy music playing here for you. So, well, what am I talking about? What is this great dumdy that we have going on here? All right, friends, the Dust Cap of the Month award is at a whole new level. It's even better than alligator banging. I'm telling you. Mikhail Thalen, Infowars.com. I love Mikhail Thalen. He always finds me dumdies. A Florida man was confronted by a county environmental specialist this week and absurdly ordered to keep the smell of his barbecue from leaving his property. Yes, friends, this is not in the onion. This is not a fake story. This is unfortunately a real story. A video of the incident, which I've watched, you should. It's, it's hilarious. Originally posted to Facebook Wednesday by homeowner Scotty Jordan, Shows winner of the Dunce Capital Month Award, Pinellas County Environmental Specialist Joe Graham, uh, the Dumdy, discussing the alleged infraction with Jordan and friends after a nearby neighbor alerted the county. I'm only here because of the odor, Graham says. I'm here because of the smoke. During the conversation, Graham asserts that the men were in violation of a local rule that bans the smell of barbecue from crossing over one's property line. You do realize that rules like that are illegal. You're not allowed to make rules. That if, you're not allowed to make an unjust law. An unjust law is not a law. You do understand this, right? That's, it's, it's been acknowledged through most of uh, democratic history. It says, during the conversation, Graham asserts that the men are in violation of a local rule, like I said. I can smell it again right now, but I'm on near property, Graham tells the group. You're allowed to have it smell like this on your property but that doesn't count but when i'm on the street that's when it counts so he is to use his inner harry potter and control the wind to prevent the smell of barbecue from emanating with odorous emanations into the environment i guess astonished by the claim the cameraman thinks graham 
th ask Graham how the group, or anyone for that matter, would be able to control where the odor travels. So who's supposed to control the smoke and the wind and where it's blowing? He asks. Graham goes on to suggest that the group move their barbecue on a regular basis in conjunction with the wind patterns. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's a great idea. Move a hot burning grill. That's that's that is great. That that is the Pinellas County environmental specialist Joe Graham solution is to move the hot grill when the wind moves. <laughs> Oh, God. He also says he can purchase a specialized version designed to minimize smoke. The local oil is similar to, similar to countless others across the country, falls in line with the long-standing effort from the Environmental Protection Agency that aims to limit everything from barbecues to wood stoves under the guise of reducing pollution, which we have already established does not in any way, shape, matter, or form, lead to global warming. So, friends, since my printer died, at the end of the show, I'll be done here in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and point the camera at the screen so that you can see the dunce cap. Are you low-def people right here? You're going to want to go to the high-def on the correct views to see the dunce cap. High-def people, uh, you're going to see it in a minute. Uh, to see the award, you're going to see the hat. Now, look at this. Hold this up for the low-def people first so that you can see it. Christelle did an amazing job. Look at her wieners and her, uh, her grill. And I'll read you what that says there in a minute. Excellent job on this. It even goes behind the letters. She outdid herself. Friends, here's what I wrote, and I mean every word of it. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. The Dunce Cap and Certificate is awarded to Pinellas County Environmental Specialist Joe Graham and the department as a whole, I wrote, for overstepping the boundaries of common sense and attempting to prevent a household from peacefully barbecuing on their own land. Your local rules do not trump the basic rights of Americans, no matter how much you wish it to be so. For being too dumb to know this, and for even supporting such rules that are counter to even basic logic, you all at the Pinellas County win the dunce cap of the month. Oh my God, people, how amazingly stupid can you get? I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, flip this around so that you guys can see it that is what it looks like that's going to be printed and sent to them and friends you have listened to the dunce cap of the month award listen to the correct views do me a favor go to the mediaspeaks.com look up the work of kyle court d lake and myself every penny you give to me goes towards a better show also um make sure you uh donate at the correct views at hotmail.com Leave comments, hit share. You wouldn't believe how much it helps when you guys hit share. So thank you for doing so. So thank you for tuning in. Good night. God bless. I'm going to see Aerosmith tomorrow. Do 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 do.